do I think we'll ever get back to the way we used to be? I was watching Emerson Bihiha this morning, so you don't have to. My girlfriend and I were watching. And they pointed out that there is a poll. Mr. McConnell, I'm hearing music from this thing over here. I don't know what this is. There's a poll that says something like 70% of Americans believe that our democracy, of course we don't have a democracy, we have a constitutional republic as we say over and over again, but I'm just telling you what the poll said. Over 70% believe that our democracy is in trouble, it's in deep trouble. And they introduced their next guest who was Carl Bernstein, the left-wing tandem of Woodward and Bernstein, formerly with the Washington Post. So I said to Nina, I said, what's the over-under on how long it'll take him to mention the word Trump? And I said, I give it 15 seconds. She said, I give it 30 seconds. He did it in about 12. Bernstein said, well, the big problem, of course, is our last president, yada, blah, et cetera. <sighs> Do I need to point out one more time that when it comes to the percentage of Americans who thought race relations were good or somewhat good, the peak came during the first administration of George W. Bush, his first term. And it fell like a stone during the second term of Barack Obama. Because much of what people talk about in terms of us not getting along has to do with race. And when I say race, it has to do with blacks and whites. Polls pretty much don't give a rip what Asian Americans think or what Hispanics think. It's about blacks and whites. Whenever you hear the term race relations, it's how black people feel about white people, how white people feel about how black people feel about white people. That's what it is. That's what we're talking about here. And 83% of Democrats believe Donald Trump's a racist. So here's where we are. You can't have a point of view in this country without the left somehow maligning your point of view as racist if you're white. And if you're black, you're the black face of white supremacy. That's where we are now. Hollywood, academia, media. And it's pretty disgusting. When if you look at it in any objective way, any meaningful way, are black people oppressed? Every Fortune 500 company has something called a outreach program, a diversity consultant, or some such thing to make sure that their workforce is diverse, however you define the word diverse. Virtually every college has changed, altered, lowered standards in order to make sure that more blacks and Hispanics are admitted. That is the basis for the Supreme Court case that the court has agreed to hear regarding plaintiffs, Asian Americans who are suing Harvard because it's clear that Asian Americans are being shafted in favor of lesser qualified by, by their standards, blacks and Hispanics. Out here in California, we had a initiative to stop the use of race-based preferences. This was about 20 years ago and it passed. And what happened? The result was the percentage of Asian Americans admitted into the more elite state colleges, UC Berkeley and UCLA, went up dramatically. Percentage of blacks and browns went down, but not went down altogether regarding all 10 or so of the UC colleges here in California. A greater percentage of blacks and browns were admitted to the lesser competitive campuses. So the overall number of blacks and browns admitted to the UC system did not change. In fact, went up a little bit. And the dropout rates improved because the students were better matched with the ability of them to keep up with that school. But the bottom line is it is easier for a black person with a given SAT and a given and given grades to get into a, a school of his or her choice than a white student who's similarly qualified. It's a lie. That systemic racism is holding people back. We've talked about this many times. And it's getting people killed because cops are pulling back. It's called the Ferguson effect or the George Floyd effect or the Minneapolis effect. Choose your term. And as a result, cops are being less proactive. And as we discussed last couple of weeks, hundreds of people are now dead who otherwise wouldn't be dead. But for the cops stopping their proactive policing in certain cities. New York, Chicago, L.A., Philadelphia, Baltimore, St. Louis. By this lie. So the lie 
that America is systemically racist, continues to infuse our society to make virtually everything worse. A young lady was just murdered in Los Angeles. Killer still on the loose. And so far, about $25,000 has been raised as opposed to a quarter million dollar raise for the UCLA grad student who happened to be white, who was working by herself in a furniture store in Hancock Park, an upscale area of L.A. where Maxine Waters has her mansion. And a local black activist questioned why there was so little money raised for this young lady as opposed to the UCLA grad student. The answer is, unfortunately, it's commonplace for blacks to be killed and Hispanics to be killed in Los Angeles. L.A. Times had a front page article and it said virtually all of the increased homicides year to year that we've seen has come at the expense of the black and brown communities. Black Lives Matter couldn't give a rip. If a white cop kills a black person, well, <laughs> in they come. But gang members killing other gang members, which is the more often, more likely way a young black man is going to be killed, they couldn't give a rip. A young black man is eight times more likely to be a victim of a homicide compared to a young white man. The number one cause of preventable death for young white men is accidents like car accidents. The number one cause of preventable or non-preventable death for a young black man, homicide, almost always at the hands of another young black man. And this governor has the nerve to come down to downtown L.A. and comment on the thefts that are going on on these trains and refers to those doing it as gang members and then apologize for calling them gang members having released, overseen the release of thousands of convicted felons, including violent ones, because he believes that, well, it's just unfair for bad guys to be thrown in jail if they're disproportionately black and brown because that's evidence of a systemically racist criminal justice system. Never mind the victims are overwhelmingly black and brown. It's disgusting. 888-971-SAGE, 888-971-7243.